Everybody, Steve with Seth Fidel coming at you with an end of the year good news update or just a good news story that just came out. Our friends with Papa Strance, they are now in the United States of America, North America in general. So now they're in Papa Strance, North Scotland, uh, New Zealand. They're still building down there. And now Great Falls, Billings, Diocese in Montana, the United States of America. This was on September, uh, October 7. I, I used to be able to read 7 October 2020. They got the canonical invitation to establish a monastery. There's a photo with the bishop there and Father Michael Mary signing. Uh, so in, I think it was a 200-acre hilly domain, 72 Red Shaw Lane, Forces, Montana. So then they're building a future monastery there for the American Foundation. So that's just fantastic news. Uh, Aves, please, for the continued growth of that and the success of this. Uh, it's funny, the the, the, Mont the Rosa Mystica, they're going to call it the Montana Rosa Mystica. Uh, one of the, I'm going to talk, tell you about their YouTube channel that they have, which I guess, yeah, I could click right there. Yes. Is that right? No, that's a different one. That's the one I'm usually, I'm always used to going to. They started a new one. That's right. Here it is. So they have live streams. They only have 474 subscribers. So please subscribe. And then click the bell so that you can get the alerts. Uh, but yeah, they have all kinds of different uh, lectures before mass live streams. And they, they do a little kind of like a 20, 30 minute, 40 minute uh, lecture on a topic. And then they'll do a rosary. And in some cases, they'll do mass. So check it out. Just I'll have a link under the show notes with uh, with the link for the uh, this blog spot, the blog write up that Father Michael put up, and the address if you want to help. Here it is down here. Just scroll down to the bottom, the middle of it. Uh, Trans Alpine Redemptors Inc. Send them uh, send a check towards Most Holy Rosary House, eighteen oh nine Brusset Road, Jordan, Montana five nine three three seven. Uh, and by the end of the year, obviously, you can get it in for the 501c help, uh, the write-off on taxes. So please, yeah, send them donations for this. They have four priests there now, or uh, two priests and two brothers. My apologies. Uh, so there are four there right now, and obviously, they're hoping to grow big time. So I think them coming to the States is going to make them just explode in uh, vocations. Here are some photos. If you want to scroll down, just take a look at the uh, as they call it, the Bonnie Prince Shrine that they have in Montana right now. It's the bottom. I think the priests are letting them uh, use the basement. And just some photos of the area that they're at. And just as far as the eye can see, it's kind of what they do. They're, they're no, man's land, no man's land, but it's a monster. You know? They're not supposed to be in the middle of the city. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic. So yeah, if anybody wants, if anybody didn't want to check out Papa Strance for a vocation, I guess you can go now to at least Montana, and uh, definitely check out their YouTube channel. I'm going to have an example of one of the uh, lectures that Father Michael Mary gave after I get done yapping. So when you finish, I'll have it linked to the bottom of the page somewhere over here or here, whatever the thing is. The camera's reversed, so over here or up here. I have a video. I have a, the next video, so I'm going to do part uh, one of the three Hail Marys thing. They did. So click on part two. It will go right to their web, their YouTube channel. Click to subscribe, and remember to get the bell so when they come on that you'll be watching uh, what they have. Fantastic stuff on the channels. Everyone says I have the best channel. No, these guys have the best channel that's out there. So uh, you want to know what I look at? This. <laughs> so take care. God love you. Merry Christmas to all. Have a happy new year, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Let holy praise that fancy loves. I praise and love the child whose heart no thought, whose tongue no word, whose hand no deed defiled. I praise him most, I love him best, oh praise and love is his, while him I love 
In him I live and cannot live amiss. Love's sweetest mark, land's highest theme, man's most desired light. To love him life, to leave him Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, free me this day from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, free me this day from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, free me this day from mortal sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We send you our very best wishes on this, the 6th of July, Monday, the 6th of July. We're broadcasting to this Holy Diocese of Aberdeen in Scotland, England. We've heard from people in Colorado, Wyoming, Kentucky, North Dakota, Nevada, North Carolina, Nebraska and California, the British Virgin Islands, Mumbai in India, Puerto Princesa in Palawan, Philippines, and Kagai and De Oro in the Philippines as well, in New Zealand and in Australia. So there are a few of us 
and that's good. We're sorry about the breaks in transmission. Yesterday there was a break, we've had another break at another time. We're doing our best with this. We've got a satellite specially installed so that we can have this communication. But um, well, I suppose we're a very long way from wherever it's coming from. And uh, from time to time we get these breakdowns. When it happens, I would just say click it again. We've actually got enough uh, subscribers now for us to have our own name on the internet. So that's also good. And I'm not sure how we'll do it, but we'll make that public as well before long. You'll note that the priest at Mass End doesn't genuflect. Uh, it's only because our Lord's not sacramentally present here. Yeah, the priest genuflects only for the time that our Lord is on the altar, whereas this, the server, he genuflects for the crucifix and for the sanctity of the altar. Today we'll be having the daily Requiem Mass, which will be sung. It's a Mass of Requiem for all the departed souls, and it's one we can say any day that's free. So uh, today is a free day. There's no saint, so we're going to have a, a sung Requiem Mass here uh, after the rosary. This is a beautiful email that came in, uh, and I'll read it. I've taken names out, so that it's quite anonymous, but I think you'll see it's really good. I've been joining you all for Rosary, Holy Mass and prayers on the live stream for a few days now. I cannot honestly find words to describe how very happy I am to be able to connect with you all. A few days back I had sunk to a very low point again in my life and was even having suicidal thoughts again. Then a little miracle happened the very next morning. I was desperate and begged our Lord Jesus Christ to help me get through it and help me. And help came from a named person. He sent me an email on Thursday with a link to your live stream. This for me was like a lifeline thrown to me while I was drowning. I feel so much better now that I can actually connect with you all and say the rosary and be a part of the Holy Mass with you all. I could not ask for any bigger miracle at this time in my life. I get to say the rosary, to hear Mass, this live stream is a true lifeline for me and I pray that it will continue as long as it can. You know, you couldn't get you couldn't get a nicer word and a more um, you couldn't stir up more desire for us to keep this live stream live stream going. Our constitution say that we're for people even with only a few. So uh, we're not looking for big K's. You know what I mean? Some people might be, but we're not actually. It's not really part of our vocation. We're not exactly trying to be polished either. As you know that that's part of our thing. It's kind of what you see is what you get, and we're. Someone the other day, it was myself, kicked over a microphone. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But uh, these are the things that happen because we, we've got our own life here. And this is just for three hours in our day. And we just bring what we've got and we uh, are as we are. So uh, that's fine. And one person, two people, a few people makes it worth it for us. So we've got the equipment. It's all here. So it's not going to cost us anything more except for, except for satellite. Well, you know. It won't be the end of the world. So it's a real pleasure, actually, to actually think that, you know, some of the time for people like us, we think, you know, well, we've got our life in the monastery, but uh, we also want to be out helping souls. And uh, any soul, just a soul, be great. And here we go. To help the soul. So it makes it worth it. Yes, so that does make it worth it. Uh, we've got the Surrender November, no, the, Serena, the Surrender Novena, uh, which brother has got here for me thank you brother. yes keep putting it up because as somebody said you need something you just keep need keep needing to do you need to keep telling our blessed lord i surrender myself to you take care of everything oh jesus i surrender myself to you take care of everything and i would say that's a it's a prayer to keep at because sometimes life really is a bit tough and uh, you do feel like our friend here said he felt he was drowning well, you know, that's how Peter felt when he was walking on the water. So often we're called to this. Often this is what happens. Often you feel you're going to be, you know, overtaken by a temptation or by a, an external matter in your life. Whatever it is, it could be spiritual, it could be temporal, it doesn't matter. You feel it's going to get you. If we only look up, you know, that's half the problem. We say every Mass, you know, sursum corda, 
lift up your hearts, you know. And they lifted up the Lord. So we're supposed to be people of prayer and lifting ourselves up to our Lord. And that's how we get through life, uh, by lifting ourselves up to our Lord and reposing our hope in him. And as it says, Jesus, I, offer, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. So keep at it. If you're on the surrender novena, keep at it and don't give up. It's just not worth it. We've got a job to do. We could have been born at any time. We've been born in this most delicious time, really, because although it looks like so many things are caving in around us, it looks like we've all been uh, given house arrest for the last months. Don't believe it. Look on the positive side. We've had time now to live with our Lord. And we could have been born. You could have been born. I don't know where. You could think of any horrible time in history that could have been you. You could be born in there and you still have to save your soul. And no matter how black it looks, we've all still got to do the same work. Our greatest work, the great work, is to save our souls. And we do it, how? Through prayer and through devotion to Our Lady. These are the two keys. Prayer to our Blessed Lord. Devotion to our Blessed Lady. And even eternal truths, they've got to be sandwiched between one layer and the other. Top layer, prayer. The bottom layer, devotion to Our Lady. And whatever goes in the middle, fine. We can cope with it. As long as we've got prayer, and we've got a devotion to Our Lady, we're on the right track. Good. We've got over here, you can't see it at the moment, but uh, over on the Gospel side of the altar, we have the great big statue of St. Alphonsus. And of course, he's on the Gospel side. That's the higher side of the altar. St. Gerard Magella is on the other side. But St. Alphonsus is our spiritual father because we get all our teachings from him. And we learn so much from him. He's a doctor of the church and uh, lived not so long ago. And he's, he's got so many answers for the times in which we live. So I'm going to be, after this little notice here, I'm going to be speaking to you about one of his teachings, and it may go for a few days, I don't know, but I've started it anyway, taken mostly from a good old French book. My goodness, when Our Lady said at Fatima, learn how to read, she was pointing at least me to get, all, get hold of old books. The modern books, I don't know, a lot of them pretty tinny. It's amazing how many you find a modern book, actually, if you go to the second-hand shops. You know, I, I saw a couple of modern books, I thought, well, you yeah. know, I knew the person who wrote the book, and I thought, if you could only see his book now, it's a second-hand book. It didn't last long. But these old books, you know, here we've got this is St. Alphonsus' Glories of Mary. You know, he wrote the Glories of Mary. Two great big volumes. Still going. Still going. They'll be going for a very long time. Because these are teachings of a doctor of the church. It's a completely different thing from some theologian. They say you shouldn't look at the letters after a person's name. You should look at the two letters that should be in front of his name. There should be an ST in front of his name. When you've got an ST in front of his name, you're dealing with something that's worth having. And after his name, he's got Doctor of the Church. So you can't go wrong with St. Alphonsus. And his teachings will be there for a long time. So that's, that's the statue on the Gospel side. Take note of that. That's the statue of St. Alphonsus. It was an old statue, very beaten up. And uh, Brother Nicodemus painted them all white and made them look very beautiful. And he put the gold trim on them. So they look now like the Baroque. They actually were old painted statues that have just been absolutely revamped and uh, have made this into a very beautiful little studio chapel. So the first hour, these notices and the Holy Rosary. The second hour is our Holy Mass and Thanksgiving. Today, a, a requiem Mass. So when we're offering it, think of some of the souls of your departed and offer the Mass up for them. They may be in purgatory, they may be longing for the, your prayers, and that's how you help their souls. We, we, our dead are always with us. We're always helping them. If we help them and, and, and visited them in life, we help them in death. And that's what the, that's what the right queer mass does for us. It affects help to the souls in purgatory. And you might say, well, this person's been dead for a long time. Yes, but you've got to remember Prayer masses the whole lot are sent from our time into 
God's eternity. And so the masses I'm going to say tomorrow for a soul is probably already received the fruit of it. So we've got to keep up our prayers because it makes even more powerful the moment when they died. So offer up prayers for the dead. Never neglect your dead. Whatever you do, don't neglect your dead. Uh, the people who don't have the Catholic faith neglect their dead. I've seen it. You've seen it. I was re recently at a, at a funeral. The body was taken along uh, to, uh, to the grave and just basically put in. Basically end of the story. Not the end of the story for us. Our dead live with us. We pray for our dead. And we keep praying for them. So today, the Great Queen Mass, remember your dead and pray for them. After the uh, Mass, our devotions tonight will be, again, the Sun Lit Near the Precious Blood. If you can't stay for everything, come back at least for this, the third hour, when we have the Sun Litany of the Precious Blood, followed by the Angelic Crown. Pray to St. Michael, the Archangel, and all the, all the angels. Why do we pray for them? We need the angels. Half the problem of the world today, everybody takes everything on their own shoulders. They can't see. We've got all the angelic powers there. They're all there to help us. We think we're so important, we must do it all. We don't need to do it all. We've got our part to play. And the angels are there to uh, do the other part. And the bishops, of course, who've got to make their own decisions. But for we who aren't bishops, most of our work is in sanctifying ourselves, being a good example to our neighbour, sanctifying it. We don't have to take out battle plans. Not at all. God's the one who can arrange the battle plans. He's got the angels. One angel can do an enormous amount. And as I told you, he said he'd send, he could send, if he wanted to, 12 legions of angels. So help from God is over to him. What we've got, we're supposed to have. That's the point. We've got now what we're supposed to have. And it's in this situation that we must, with fear and trembling, work out our salvation. That's the whole work of it. You know, we think, oh, but this is modern times. Modern times are always modern times. You know, when I lived in, this, in the 60s, I'm sure everybody thought things were pretty modern in the 60s. And now people look back and think, oh, 60s, I wouldn't go to a movie from the 60s. It's not enough, not, not enough action, it's all too slow. It's, it's already old times. Well, our time now will also be old times soon. So don't worry about it being modern times and things different. No, it's the same old, same old. We've got to save our souls, wherever we are, with the time we're living in. And it's not to take up a revolution, it's to actually sanctify ourselves. Revolutions are part of the distractions of the devil. If he can take us off God, then he'll be very happy. And as I said to you, if you remember the other day, when I had this, this, this uh, image was given to me of, of a person climbing up, coming onto the church, was in a heck of a mess. It could be the church today. It was as if pirates had taken over the bark of Peter. Well, he made a run for the sails, and as he climbed up the sails, up the rigging like an old-fashioned old fashioned boat, you know, a romantic boat, uh, climbed up the sails, and then he got near the top, and it was actually a massive crucifix. And he was climbing up the side of Christ, a massive crucifix climbing up the side of Christ to find his way into the shelter in Christ's wounds. And he was using a rope to climb up this, what seemed to be like a cliff. And the rope would swing out because it was in the sea. I told you it's not too polished. Uh, the rope would swing out because it was in the sea. And then he could look down and see what was going on in the, in, in, down below on the deck of the church dangerous. He had to keep his eyes off looking down. He had to keep our eyes fixed on Christ. And as it were, climbing up this cliff to find one's way to the wounded side of Christ. And that rope, of course, was actually the rope of a scapula. It was a massive scapula. So that's the point. And that's what we're all about here, is actually needing the angels, the crown of the angels, that they will take their part and they will help us in our work of sanctifying ourselves. Then we'll have night prayers, St. Patrick's breastplate, and the prayer against uh, Satan and the apostate angels. Good. We haven't got a long time to go, so I'll start already now with this 
little work that I found in an old French book, well over uh, well over a hundred years old, and uh, it's on the devotion of the three Hail Marys by Saint Alphonsus, who not he didn't start it as you'll find out in a later talk, but he became known by Saint Pius X that he's the apostle, he's the apostle and the propagator of the devotion of the three Hail Marys. You know, in the old days, you know, you used to. If it was a bit of a, uh, people were talking about confession, you know, the priest would be saying, oh, yes, 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 hear all the sins, oh, yes, three, hail, for your penance, three Hail Marys. That three Hail Marys actually comes from this great propagator of the devotion to the three Hail Marys, St. Alphonsus. And it's not just kind of a little throw, up, throw off type of a, a, a throw off penance, you know, just give the person three Hail Marys, you know, be done with it. No, 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 that's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. This devotion, as you'll see, is a very important devotion. And St. Alphonsus, St. Alphonsus, doctor of the church, he made it his work to propagate this because of its importance. And he propagated it and propagated it and propagated it. And from now on, we'll start all of our talks with the three Hail Marys. Why? Because one of the acts of St. Alphonsus was to make all his missionaries begin every, every, every communication with the three Hail Marys so that it would become known, so that it would become used because so useful, so vitally useful. And as you'll see, uh, one, of the, one of the people here, he, he, uh, one of the people, groups that he was writing for were the contemplative nuns. Now you think, you know, contemplative nuns, you know, Carmelites and Redemptoristines and Paul Clares and Benedictines, of course, you know. Don't go telling them about three Hail Marys. You know, these people are people of prayer and closure. Oh, not at all. Not at all. He inculcates to the nuns, the enclosed nuns, the importance of them, Mother Abbess and Mother Subprioress and all the others, the importance for them of beginning every morning with the three Hail Marys and before they go to bed saying the three Hail Marys and he said it is a mark of a true servant of Mary. He puts it down to that and one of the things he puts it down to is it doesn't matter how small the devotion is so long as it's consistent. So he's after three Hail Marys every morning and three Hail Marys every night. Now he's saying every morning and every night. He's not saying some mornings and some nights. Now you've broken it. Forget it. Start again. Every morning and every night. A small thing. You say, it's a, someone say, oh, I've got the rosary. Yes. Are you sure you're going to be able to say the rosary every single day and never miss it? So he gets it all back to the smallest thing possible, the most practical thing possible. You're going to get up every morning, and chances are, every evening you're going to go to bed. Well, there's the two key parts of a day, so to speak. One the beginning of the day, one the end of the day. And he wants three Hail Marys then. One in the beginning of the day, three Hail Marys in the evening, at the end of the day. And he says to the Carmelite nuns, to, the, to all these contemplatives, that's a sign. Don't talk about big divine offices and singing this and singing that. No, not worry about the singing nun. He wants three Hail Marys. Just give me three Hail Marys every morning and three Hail Marys every night, consistently, every single day of the year, every single morning, every single night. Die like that, you, are, you have the sign, the mark, of a true servant of Mary. And as we know, a child of Mary can never be lost. And that's what he's after. He wants you to be a child of Mary. He knows the intricacies of modern life. He's got it all down. He's a master of the whole thing. He's written books and so many books like this. Books and books and books. When he gets to this book, he says the most important part of the book the whole big book he's written. The most important part now is the practice of what, how you can become a child of Mary. What's he put it down to? Three Hail Marys every morning. Three Hail Marys every night. 
the Ave Maria. So he says the first, his first devotion to Our Lady is the Ave Maria, the Hail Mary. And he says, yes, you should sprinkle Hail Marys through the day. Well, St. Alphonsus lives everything. He doesn't practice. He doesn't give you to practice what he, uh, what he hasn't already practiced himself. He said a Hail Mary every quarter of an hour when the clock struck. Probably not at night, but he mentions in his book about St. Alphonsus Rodriguez. He said a Hail Mary every hour. And the angels woke him up every hour during the night. So that he would say his, hour, his, his Ave Maria every hour. Well, St. Alphonsus must have wanted a good night's sleep. He had, because he said, he said every quarter of an hour. But I don't think the angels bother waking him up for every quarter of an hour. But he's pointing there the importance of the Hail Mary. And then we've got the Angelus. And he's, he's beginning the Hail Mary, like we have it in our rule. When we go to the table, we have to unwrap our serviette. We've got to say the Hail Mary. And then when we fold up our serviette, we're saying again, Hail Mary. And he wants before every action, if possible, that we're thinking of, as it were, sowing like seeds, the Ave Maria. Ave Maria, Ave Maria, we're saying Ave Maria, invoking Our Lady. That's fine, he says, but the cream of the devotion to the Ave Maria, the real nub of it all, is to say the three Hail Marys every morning and the three Hail Marys every night. So look, I won't go into it any further. In fact, we've got only four minutes before, six minutes before we're supposed to start the rosary. So tomorrow we'll start and go through the actual working out of this devotion that St. Alphonse is so renowned for. St. Pius X called him the apostle and the propagator of this devotion that, as you will see, comes from the Middle Ages. Uh, but St. Alphonse is by far the great apostle of this devotion to the three Hail Marys. It's a beautiful devotion, and uh, you know, I thought St. Alphonsus, he died when he was nearly 91. You know, there should be an arithmetic, an arithmetic prize for somebody who can work out how many times he would have said the Hail Mary. Three times in the morning and three times at night. For, let's say he started when he was 10, but he probably started when he was a very young boy. We'll say when he, when he was 10. So how about for nearly 81 years, three Hail Marys every morning and three Hail Marys every night, and include the, the leap years, I wonder how many Hail Marys he said just on this devotion during the course of his life. What a wonderful, what a wonderful great number of thousands of Hail Marys just on this devotion alone. That whoever takes the devotion up is offering up to Our Lady and is receiving her protection. And with it all is a true child of Mary and a child of Mary can never be lost. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.